thanks to Dork's Music and I'm going to be talking a little bit about switching to the bass clarinet. Um, now there are two kinds of people that usually switch to bass clarinet, either clarinetists wanting to extend their repertoire, go down into the lower register, um, or else saxophonists um, who might be doing some doubling in big bands or even playing in shows in pit bands and things. Um, and both of those groups of people face similar but different challenges um, switching to the bass clarinet, um, mostly in terms of the embouchure. And the two kind of real problems you have is most clarinetists, when they switch to bass clarinet, um, struggle a little bit with the lower register. Um, and that's basically because the embouchure you have for a clarinet is a little bit tighter than the embouchure that you want on a bass clarinet. Um, and you've just got to get used to that feeling of kind of really relaxing, um, particularly when you're down in the lower register. Um, what you often hear when clarinetists play bass clarinet is I'll get this going. It kind of goes thin at the bottom, or sometimes even jumps up the kind of kind of get those sounds as you're trying to do that. And what I try to visualize as a clarinetist um, is almost moving to a slightly more circular embouchure and allowing that bottom lip, bottom jaw, just to relax and open up slightly. Um, and if you can achieve that, that's what will give you the really rich low end that. And that kind of really nice, big, open resonance at the bottom. Um, and it does take a little bit of getting used to and feels quite counterintuitive. Um, and a, little, a lot of that can actually come from what setup you're playing on as well. Um, if you play on a relatively hard setup on clarinet, you've probably got a really strong embouchure, a nice, kind of fairly tight embouchure. Um, and then on bass clarinet, when you're playing that, that's what's making the learn difficult. Um, and sometimes it can help initially to actually play a slightly softer setup on bass clarinet, maybe go down a reed strength, um, and that'll allow you that feeling of openness, kind of that relaxed embouchure, and allow the resonance down at the bottom. Now, when saxophonists come to the clarinet, they often have the opposite problem um, in that they'll have a great low register and they've got this nice um, relaxed embouchure. But when they go up to the top, um, they'll either get squeaks or it'll go a bit flat. It'll sound kind of... And it'll kind of go a little bit wild. Um, and for sax players, it's really that thing of making sure the embouchure is supported enough when you go up to the top, kind of really supporting, kind of pulling in the corners of the mouth, um, keeping that nice and tight. Um, for sax players, generally I'd recommend probably using a similar setup um, to what you're using on your sax. Um, it is interesting talking about setups. Um, I'm very lucky to have a Selma low C bass clarinet, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and when you get into professional models, the top um, ones are basically this Selma low C model, or there's a low C model by Buffet as well. And people have very strong views as to which ones they prefer. Um, for me, I love the Selma, others love the Buffet both great instruments. Um, but often sax players slightly favour the Selmas. I think that's, for me, I say this as a sax player, I think because all of my saxes I play on um, are Selmas, this just feels kind of very natural to me. Um, the other thing with this, the mouthpiece I'm playing on here is a Selma Concept mouthpiece. Um, and I play similarly a Selma Concept mouthpiece on my soprano alto and tenor saxes, so it feels like a very natural transition. Um, I find the buffet basses feel a little bit more like a clarinet, they're a B-flat clarinet, they're kind of almost more clarinetian feel, whereas the Selma is almost more saxophonian feel. So it is worth trying different instruments. Now, I say that these instruments are expensive, so probably most people aren't going to be starting on one of these. Um, if you are looking for an instrument to start on, I would say the Yamaha student bass clarinet is absolutely fantastic. Um, I did a video on that recently for Dorks, it was the first time I played it, and it's incredibly free-blowing, really easy to play across the whole range, 
um, and you can rent those um, relatively inexpensively or get them on trial and try those out. But you might want to consider your mouthpiece. So for sax players coming across, the Selma mouthpieces feel very natural. Um, or even the Yamaha mouthpiece is quite similar to some of the sort of Yamaha 4C style um, sax mouthpieces. Clarinetists, if you're used to playing a Van Doren mouthpiece on your B flat clarinet, again, you might find the Van Doren mouthpiece works really well um, when you switch over um, to the bass. So really, um, it's a case of kind of experimenting, finding the setup that works for you. Um, but also just being a little bit careful with your embouchure, clarinetist making sure you're not too tight, you're not pinching off the reed and losing the resonance, um, and sax players conversely making sure you do have enough support from that embouchure. Um, but hopefully um, you'll all have a great time trying out the bass clarinet and you'll discover what an amazingly beautiful instrument it is, particularly at the bottom end, and it'll be just another useful tool for your arsenal. Mm -hmm.